Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to create a file on the SPIFS file system of the ASP32 and write some content to it. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Firebeetle board from DF Robert. Before we get started with the actual code, let's analyze a little bit about uh, SPIFS. So basically SPIFS stands for SPI Flash File System and it is basically a file system designed to operate on flash devices um, targeting uh, embedded systems. So in our case it is one of the file uh, uh, system types supported on the SP32 alongside with the FAT file system that we have already briefly seen in uh, previous videos. So uh, moving on to the actual code Basically, you start by including uh, the library that we will need in order to interact with this file system. So the library is this spiffs.age library, and it basically will make available to us an extern variable that we'll see below in a minute. Uh, but this extern variable is what we are going to use. We are going to be calling some methods from this extern variable in order to interact with the file system to do stuff such as mounting the file system uh, or opening a file in our case, uh, we are just covering the, the opening file and the writing content to the file procedure, but we can do other stuff such as renaming a file, deleting a file, etc. So basically, this is the, the library that we need to include in order to get started. Then we are going to write the rest of our code in the setup function, and the code for this will be very simple. So as usual, we start by um, initializing a serial connection so we can output some content from our program um, so we can basically debug it and look into the actual results of our program. After that, and this procedure is very important because we always need to do it before um, interacting with the SPIFS file system, so basically we need to mount the file system. As I was uh, telling before, we have access to this spiffs uh, extern variable and in order to mount the file system we simply need to call this begin method on this spiffs variable. So basically this begin method will take care of mounting uh, the spiffs file system. Um, this method receives as optional parameter a flag and this flag basically indicates that um, if an error occurs while initializing, while mounting the file system, it will be formatted. So formatting the the, um, the file system is needed the first time we use it. So the next time you use this file system, you uh, you won't need to to format it. But basically, the first time you do, you need to format it. So it's good to pass this flag through here. Um, in order for you, if this is a, your first time interacting with it, in order for it to be formatted. So basically, uh, this will also return a boolean value indicate, uh, indicating if some error has occurred or not during the mounting procedure. And naturally, we are going to print it to the serial port in order to help us debugging. And if this problem has occurred, we return because there's no point in trying to interact with the file system without being able to mount it. Okay, assuming that everything uh, goes well with the mounting procedure. The next thing we are going to do is opening the file. So before we can write some content to it, we need to open the file. And this is done by calling this open method on our spiffs extern variable. So basically we call this open method and we pass as first input um, the path to the file that we want to write. Basically I'm, I'm creating here a, a file called test.txt uh, txt uh, in the root path, so in the root directory, and then a second argument of this open method, we need to pass a constant indicating um, the opening mode of the file. In our case, since we want to write content to the file, we basically pass this constant called file write, and the file will be open in writing mode. So as output, this method will return an object of file class, which is basically the object that we use to interact and to operate over an actual file. So basically we are going to store the, uh, this uh, file object in this, in this variable. And the next thing we are going to do is checking if the file was correctly open for, uh, uh, for writing. Basically, this uh, file, uh, this file class overloads the C++ boolean operator, so we can uh, directly uh, put the, this object inside an if condition uh, to check if some error has occurred while, while opening the file. Um, so we don't need to call any method. We basically uh, just directly use this. In this case, it is negated because it will return false in case an error. Um, in case an error has occurred while opening the file, so basically uh, we just do this in order to, to, do, to do this error check. 
So moving on, after we we are sure, and again, if, if an error occurs, we are going to return because there's no point in trying to write content to the file uh, in case we cannot open it uh, for writing. So if everything goes fine, we know that our file was correctly opened, so we can print content to it. And basically, we just need to call this print method on our file object, passing as input uh, a string with the content that we want to write to the file. Okay, so and basically, uh, this is a very simple string, a test string. Uh, you can write wherever you want here. For this tutorial, we are not going to read the actual content of the file. We'll leave that for uh, the next tutorial. But basically, we just do this and then uh, we check if the, the value, uh, the, basically this, this print method will return the number of bytes written to the file. We are not going to count the actual number of files, but we are basically checking if uh, this number is different from zero. And if it is, uh, we assume that the content was written to the file. In case this value is less uh, is is equal to zero, it means that we did not write any content to the file. So we print here this uh, message indicated that uh, the file the file write has failed. So to finalize, after we write the content to the file, we simply need to close it with this call to the close method, and that's it. After this point, the file should be uh, created in our file system with the content with this test string that we have um, added here. So I've already uploaded the code to my SP32 because the procedure usually takes a little bit. So basically, I, I already have the code here. As you can see, I, I already ran it before. But I'm going to run it again, and as you can see, I did not have any error until this point, and I was able to write the content to the file. In this case, it is basically over overwriting the file that uh, was already there because I ran this this code before. And basically, this is it. The procedure works uh, worked very well, so no problem, no error messages. And now, in the next tutorial, uh, we are going to check how we can actually read the content of a file. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial.